What is it that draws us to sail offshore? Man, this is awesome. When will it end? Is it calm waters, starry nights, and beautiful sunsets? Wow, the sunrise is just making everything on Atticus like pink and orange, and it is so pretty. Is it all ruined by seasickness, rough seas, and lack of sleep? Oh, I am just kind of struggling through every, every minute. Or are those parts that suck the most essential to why we keep coming back? I'm Desiree. And I'm Jordan. And this is Captain Oso, the little dude. Seven years ago, we bought a super neglected, really small sailboat that we called Atticus with the dream of seeing the world. Over the next seven years, we spent a lot of time fixing up Atticus. But we also did boat work for money in Mexico, <laughs> traded lobster for rum in Cuba, and lived off grid in Panama during the pandemic. Recently, we upgraded to our dream sailboat, Atticus 2, and are now sailing from Maine down to the Annapolis Sailboat Show in Maryland. And along the way, we decided to stop in at Block Island. So, sit, sit, yes, good boy. All right, Chef Bud in the kitchen. Uh, yes. What you got going on over here? Got to flip one little birthday egg. We are ready. Wait, is it someone's birthday today? Your birthday. It's my birthday. Happy birthday to Bud. That but looks you're, good. Might as well have a feast. We've got a long sail ahead of us. <laughs> yeah, we've actually been in this anchorage for two nights and a day, basically. We got here thinking that we would just kill a couple hours to wait for the current to get into Long Island Sound. <laughs> and basically that disturbance that NHC was tracking going up the coast was just becoming like higher and higher of a chance of forming. So we ended up staying here uh, for two nights, kind of just waiting for this system Which to get better. Which has been really nice. I was ready for a break. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like passages are just good to just kind of bring your bar of what is good way down. You know, it's like, wait, I get to sleep for eight hours? All oh right. my God, this is amazing. It looks like this system, which is still just sort of like going nuts with like 30 plus knot winds, looks like that's all gonna start to die down tonight. There's one more forecast update that's gonna happen a little bit later on today. I'm gonna check that out and then we're gonna get going. All right, well, I opened up the engine compartment just to kind of see how everything was looking. And I found that the insulation on the compartment door, it's been kind of getting loose and old and crappy for a while. And so we taped it, but it started bagging out enough where the new pulleys actually tore holes into the insulation. So I'm gonna remove this freaking insulation and just clean all this up. All right, so I've been messaging back and forth with Bernie, our broker, and he doesn't have much confidence that we'll be able to make it to Annapolis on Atticus 2 in time for the boat show. So I said, no worries, Jordan wants to bet that we'll make it, and the winner gets your new puppy, darling. And of course, Bernie ups the stakes and he says, the bet is if you make it to Annapolis by your boat, you win and get my Valiant 42. Keep dreaming, sail safe. So our stop over here in Block Island has extended way longer than we initially anticipated, meaning that our sail south is gonna be cutting it to the wire. Like we can't go slow, we can't make any stopovers. Um, and even if we push really hard, it's still kind of unclear whether or not we'll be able to make it to Annapolis in time for the Annapolis Boat Show. But after Bernie's text, now I really want to get down there in time. Okay, so we just got an update through Predict Wind and the situation is looking good. We've got the European model shows like really nice winds, 18 knots right behind us. And that more or less lasts all the way down to Delaware Bay before the wind sort of dies. The big event that happened is you can see here that that low pressure system still has some strength, but as we start sailing into it, it starts to die. And so we're just gonna really get to utilize 
all the best aspects of having a low pressure system right next to us. We get the wind direction, but not that strong kind of gale force winds. The one thing is the waves are gonna be a little big. It's looking like we're gonna have like seven foot waves, something like that. We'll find out once we get out there, which is right now. So let's, let's do this, man. There's enough waiting around. We got a boat show to get to. Say goodbye to Block Island for the second time. So as we're leaving Block Island, I realize I'm like a little bit cranky. <laughs> Whoa. Um, what was that? I forgot to turn the autopilot on. Oh. So I hit the auto button and then went to go trim the, the sail. And like we just started turning into the beach. <laughs> I thought you knew something I didn't know. Woo! <laughs> that was intense. Hey, bud, can you uh, go turn the autopilot on? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see. So as we're leaving Block Island behind us, I realize I'm like a little bit grumpy, actually. <laughs> and it's just like, I don't want to leave this nice protected anchorage. Um, but I told Jordan, I was like, you know, I really just need to remember why we're doing all this in the first place. And it's to prove Bernie Jackets wrong. <laughs> That Valiant is ours! <laughs> well, this is nice. Can we do this the whole way? <laughs> this is nice. What are we going? Six knots. Man, this is awesome. When will yeah. it end? Uh, it'll end once Block Island stops protecting us from the swell. <laughs> Go figure, Block Island. Blocks. Blocking the waves. <laughs> Blocking the wind. Way to be a block hole. <laughs> Yeah, what a beautiful way to start this passage, you know? Offshore sailing is just kind of an emotional roller coaster, you know? Once we get into the routine of taking this boat offshore and get used to it, and we've done it a couple times, this won't feel like much of a thing, but I'm still in that phase where it's like, my senses are heightened, like I kind of am aware that like, yeah, all kinds of weird stuff could happen. Such a beautiful setting, like at, on the cusp of like an adventure, it feels really, feels good. I feel, I feel really excited about it. Are you king of the world? That boom comes. We're both goners, buddy. I got the preventer on. <laughs> you like it up there? I am feeling a little seasick. <laughs> yeah, the motion is not the uh, ideal motion that we experienced there at the beginning. We're definitely just getting a large swell coming out from the center of this low. Every now and then one gets us and push, pushes us way over and then we go this way and then that way and then this way and then that way. This is that part of like a passage where you're just kind of struggling through every, every minute. So I'm just gonna listen to my audiobook and just try to relax. All right, well, it's the end of my watch. I'm feeling much better. It was a serious struggle for, I don't know, like an hour or two, but uh, I don't know what it is, but I'm just feeling a whole, whole lot better now. How are you feeling there, buddy? I feel pretty rough. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's like dressing to come up here with the roll down below, kind of nauseating. Yeah, totally. There's a sliver of moon, but it's real bright. There, the stars are out, there's no clouds. Other than these big waves hitting us on the side, it's really, really beautiful and nice out. Welcome back. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Hold on. I just sleep. Uh, not so good. I think it was a combination of the fact that it's like there's a lot of noises right now. Yeah. And a part of the problem is how I've got the Genoa sheet running, it like rubs on a stanchion. Mm. And that's really loud down below. Mm. Yeah, pretty uneventful passage. Just like a lot of uh <laughs>
it is a beautiful night and you can see what I'm pretty sure are the lights of New York City. I mean, the horizon on our starboard side is just like totally lit up, almost like the sun's about to rise. We lasted the night. It was pretty rocky and the wind is kind of pushing us off our course to the left by, right now we're 16 nautical miles to the left, to the left of our um, ideal course. So um, I'm gonna wait till Jordan is off of his watch to um, drive over, maybe put a whisker pole on. Hello, I feel like a real person again. The wind has kind of calmed down a little bit, but mostly the sea state has kind of just gotten more regular and the waves are coming from directly behind us. Huh, yeah, I just feel so much better, it's crazy. When I'm seasick, I'm just like living in 10 minute intervals. So I just set my um, alarm for 10 minutes and I make sure that I stand up, do a horizon check, check the sails, check the wind direction, check the speed, check our course. And I have to do that every 10 minutes to keep us safe. When I'm seasick, I'm just living from like 10 minute increment to the next, just like all business, the rest is misery. And like, this is my duty and I must do it. But it makes moments like this amazing because I feel awesome and I feel excited that we're going to be making it to Annapolis. Still, hopefully, fingers crossed, nothing weird goes on. All right, so we are making our way up into the Delaware Bay and we're pretty much going into the entrance now and sort of becoming a part of the whole traffic separation scheme. Basically, there's a traffic separation scheme. It's almost like lanes on a highway, and small boats like us can actually kind of get outside of it because we don't draw that much. Right now, I've got three big ships that are exiting Delaware Bay that I'm making sure that I'm keeping my eye on. But yeah, I'm just basically looking at AIS, looking at the horizon, using the binoculars, and just kind of reconfirming what I see with what's on the chart over and over and over again. sunlight in a long time. <laughs> um, we've been going through these um, really narrow channels with really big boats coming directly towards us and the navigation charts suggest that you stay out of the main shipping channels if you can, like if you're a recreational vessel, but then right outside of the channel they say, oh by the way there's these fishing structures that are either permanent or semi-permanent, so like watch out for those. And so now that the sun is out, I'm really excited because that means I can stay even farther away from that main shipping channel. And hopefully I'd be able to see any like fishing structures or oyster buoys or structures. Um, because at night it's just pitch black and it's, there's no luck of being able to see anything. Jordan's asleep up here with me just to make sure that if I need an extra pair of eyes, he can be available rather than have him down below. boat behind us and it's saying in about 17 minutes it's going to be pretty close to us so I'm just trying to stay as far to the right of the channel as possible 
Meanwhile, up forward, there is another boat coming towards us. So I'm hoping that gives both boats enough time to do what they have to do around Little Atticus too. <laughs> The sunrise is just making everything on Atticus like pink and orange and it is so pretty. Ooh, final stretch. Thank you for this gorgeous morning sunrise. We're coming up to the C&D Canal, so the Chesapeake and Delaware Bay Canal. Yeah, so I'm just gonna wait because we got a tow and like a big ship coming through. It sounds like if vessels are trying to get in and out of the canal, like they can make like kind of difficult turns, you know, and you just don't want to be there at the entrance when they're trying to do that. I'm just gonna wait for this boat to go by and then we're heading in. One of these embarrassed that they can't turn without a tugboat. <laughs> on watch together? Yes, we're paying very close attention. <laughs> hey, Oso. Yeah, you having fun? He's like, I'm her cuddle slave. Free me. <laughs> for a couple of days it's interesting how you know being physically uncomfortable and not really eating all that well and not really sleeping all that much it makes like sunsets so much more kind of intense you know it makes me appreciate things like natural beauty a lot more and so just watching the sunset over the Chesapeake it's just kind of like this really moving thing for me right now you know like feel that sense of adventure. In our daily lives, we go to great lengths to avoid discomfort and suffering. But in a weird way, if we're too successful at doing this, we adapt to a world of comfort and ease, and yet find it hard to appreciate. And we risk losing altogether the happiness that can be found in the simplest moments. So maybe when it comes to sailing offshore, the parts that suck are actually the most important parts. 